This lecture models love affairs with differential equations. This is motivated by an excellent article by Strogatz in the year 98. We have two characters in the plot. One is Romeo and the other is Juliet. Romeo, we find, is in love with Juliet. And we assume that Juliet is fickle in the following sense. The more Romeo likes her, the more Juliet wants to stay away. If Juliet stays away, Romeo starts to back off. When Romeo starts to back off, Juliet actually begins to like him. Romeo also tends to echo Juliet. So he starts to like her when she likes him and he becomes cold when she stays away. So let R of T be Romeo's love slash hate for Juliet at time T and J of T be Juliet's love slash hate for Romeo at time T. Positive values of R and J signify love and negative values of R and J signify hate. Then a model for the system is R dot is equal to AJ and J dot is equal to minus BR where A and B are positive parameters. So the equation is R dot is equal to AJ and J dot is equal to minus BR where A and B are greater than zero. So let's plot J versus R. So when we plot J versus R, we find that we get a bunch of closed orbits. So we have quite a sad outcome. Because of the closed orbits, Romeo and Juliet have a never-ending cycle of love and hate. So the governing system has a center at Rj is equal to 0, 0, and they manage to like each other about one quarter of the time. It is always good modeling practice to generalize the model in order to ask a wider range of questions. So let us generalize the Romeo and Juliet system. R dot is equal to AR plus BJ, J dot is equal to CR plus DJ where the parameters may have either sign. We can have different combinations. For example, A greater than zero and B greater than zero, or A less than zero and B greater than zero. We can, in fact, based on this simple model, analyze and predict the interactions of a range of different personality types. In fact, we can then pair the personality types that will, in theory, maximize happiness. 
Now let's ask a fun question. What happens when two identically cautious people get together? The system is R dot is equal to AR plus BJ and J dot is equal to BR plus AJ where A is less than 0 and B is greater than 0. We can interpret A as a measure of cautiousness and B is a measure of responsiveness. So they both get excited when the other person makes advances. Now the system model along with the underlying assumptions is in place and we can do some analysis. The corresponding matrix is A is equal to AB BA which has the trace t is equal to 2a which is less than 0. The determinant is equal to a square minus b square and t square minus 4 delta is equal to 4 b square which is greater than 0. So the fixed point rj is equal to 0 0 is a saddle point if a square is less than b square and a saddle node if a square is greater than b squared. We can calculate the eigenvalues and the corresponding eigenvectors. So lambda 1 is a plus b, v1 is equal to 1 and 1, lambda 2 is equal to a minus b and v2 is equal to 1 minus 1. Since a plus b is greater than a minus b, the eigenvector 1, 1 spans the unstable manifold when the origin is a saddle point and it spans the slow eigendirection when the origin is a stable node. So let's plot the phase portrait for the two cases. So first consider a square greater than b square where we plot j versus r that's the stable node. So now let's make some inferences. If a square is greater than b square, then the relationship actually always fizzles out due to mutual indifference. Now consider a square less than b squared and plot j versus r. This turns out to be a much more interesting case. There you go. Now we've got the full diagram. So now let's make inferences on this case as well. So if a square is less than b square, the two people are in fact much more daring and the relationship turns out to be explosive. Depending on the initial feelings, 
either it's absolutely great or complete war. In either case, the trajectories approach the line R is equal to J and so the feelings are absolutely mutual. Let's provide some food for thought. Suppose that Romeo and Juliet react to each other but actually do not react to themselves. So we get R dot is equal to AJ and J dot is equal to BR. So what really happens in this particular case? Can we assume that opposites will attract towards each other? So we can analyze the following system now. That's R dot is equal to AR plus BJ and J dot is equal to minus BR minus AJ. What if nothing could change the way Romeo could feel about Juliet? We'll have to consider R dot is equal to zero and J dot is equal to AR plus BJ. So does Juliet end up liking or hating him? We have to put in a note of caution before you take these models seriously. And that is that the real world is actually highly nonlinear. So while these are good starting points, we have to note that these are only linear systems, but they themselves lead to interesting conclusions. So this was a short and a fun lecture on exploring the relationship between love affairs and differential equations. The motivation comes from William Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, but in abstraction the question is roughly the following. You have two characters in the plot, and let's assume that these two characters, in this particular case, is Romeo and Juliet, have, let's say, slightly different personality types, or they might have very different personality types, i.e. they might react to situations in different ways. And the question that you really want to ask is, well, what happens as time tends to infinity? Are they going to spend a large fraction of their time being happy? Or will they spend a large fraction of their time fighting with each other and being unhappy? So you can ask questions of the form, well, if you had opposites, then will those opposites attract? Or will they actually repel each other in the long term? So this was a toy example, of course, and we tried to model this uh, through linear two-dimensional systems. But when, even if it was a toy model, we noticed that you know, some element, some crude element of reality could be crept into the model. So there is some element of, this is not absolutely ridiculous to think of the interaction of two human beings being modeled through differential equations. Having said that, I should put in a caveat that human beings very rarely behave like linear objects and the real world is almost certainly non-linear.